GWFM is a global chartered body and the largest WFM community in the world. GWFM brings a thought leadership to the WFM industry at the global level and pushing the boundaries. We want to help WFM industries solving their business problems with the innovative approaches and uh, providing kind of you know, solutions. So far, we have done more than 250 events globally, hackathons, industry advisory, industry best practices and best tools showcase, quiz programs, round tables, annual summit and semi-annual summits, keynote speeches, panel discussions, and publishing WFM news and white papers. GWFM conversation with the leader is one of the greatest talk series wherein you can listen to the great minds in the world. You don't really get to meet up with them and have a conversation. Here is where GWFM talk series is a platform that GWFM offers you where you could listen to them with their minds and you will have a great learning in the process. Trust me, you don't really get to see any of such chances. Today we have Rini uh, Nijman, Global WFM Leader from Conjunct. Let's take a look at it. Hi, uh, WFM friends and colleagues. It gives me a great honor and privilege to have Rene Nijman, Head of Resource Planning and uh, WFM Operations at Conjunct. Rene is located in lowly country, Netherlands. It truly gives us a great opportunity to listen to him with the person who comes from great experience, worked in you know, amazing kind of companies, and he has spent more than two decades of experience in workforce management and uh, especially in the contact center. GWFM is really humbled to have you Rene with us. Uh, GWFM Chariot Body is building community since last uh, six years. Now we are one of the largest communities in the world and we are aspiring to push the boundaries. Truly great to have you with us to have a leadership conversation. And, and uh, I really admire your passion towards WFM. I know very few people lost long but you have been sticking around and uh, seeing kind of contribution to the organization but also to the community has been immense. Thank you. Thank you so much. It, the honor is all with me. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Great, uh, Rene. I really appreciate your time that you have taken. I know that you have been very busy year end, right? So it truly gives us a great pleasure to have you with us. Before we start the conversation, Rene, really want to listen to your passion towards WFM. Yeah, well, WFM is is a great function within the organization, right? Um, I see um, an organization as a, a, a well-balanced organization has different powers um, built within the organization. And then uh, powers, I mean, for example, quality. Uh, an organization always has to focus on quality making sure that the products or the, the services are of a great quality. Then you have also HR, that um, is kind of the power of the people, right? Uh, have to make sure that um, um, uh, the employees are happy and, and well uh, uh, serve that. And then uh, uh, like that, I see workforce management as the power of efficiency. And in a great organization, you have a balance of all those powers. And um, that's why I like workforce management so much, because it's one of those um, stones of your organization um, that drives efficiency. And um, the development of our function over the years, um, if you think back, uh, you said 20 years. If I, I try to think back 20 years, it was not even called workforce management. Uh, uh, we did uh, totally different things. Uh, we did uh, uh, some administration of, of leave. Uh, that, that was all that we did as, as a planning department at that time. So if you think in, a, in what kind of short time we as workforce management developed where we are, 
And if you think that towards the future, uh, what's still possible? Um, yeah, I think uh, um, um, that's where my passion is. Absolutely. Very, uh, uh, very well narrated with your passion. I see that a lot of uh, Dublin professionals, they're looking up to leaders like you and towards that, you know, they can learn from. This is one of the good examples. Great, uh, Remy. Right. Thank you. Good, uh, start with the conversation. First thing that, that you know, hear from you, in what ways has COVID-19 changed the assumptions about recruiting, training, and managing workforce? If you could throw some light on that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So COVID-19 impacted us all, right? And um, one of the maybe obvious things that, that everyone might even find normal by now after almost two years of, uh, of COVID-19 is uh, work from home. And, uh, but if you think before COVID, um, many organizations were thinking or making first steps or had uh, like us, maybe 20% maybe of their workforce working from home. Um, but it was not as easy to, to uh, get people work from home. Um, because also because clients were sometimes insisting on dedicated and closed offices. Um, well, those clients are now supporting work from home. So COVID-19 accelerated the movement from work from work in the office to, um, to work from home. And, and it's now kind of a global accepted standard. We have to see how that will evolve over the year, over the coming years, when hopefully we we are better able to um, to uh, handle uh, uh, COVID and and other pandemics. But um, for now, we have a lot of workforce working from home, and that that means something uh, for your recruiting, for your training, and and how you manage your uh, your working uh, workforce. Um, recruiting has new opportunities. They have a much larger labor market where they had to find people relatively close to a location. Um, now they can look um, across the country, um, maybe across the globe, if you like, if you, you have that scope. Um, it doesn't really matter anymore if someone is, is really close to a country. So the labor market is, is larger. Uh, there's a different, really different labor market. Um, but that also means something for your training. You can't have the people in a classroom. In a, a, a classroom training is, is not possible. And that means also something. And that means that you have to give a virtual training, uh, but the groups of training are, what, what I'm seeing are usually also larger. So where you had maybe 10, 20 people in a classroom. Uh, um, now we see larger groups in, uh, in virtual trainings. Um, but it has also new challenges. Um, think about equipment. Um, equipment was uh, tied to a building, to a seat, um, not to an employee. Um, when an employee came to the office, a new hire, there was already uh, a seat with, with equipment. Now you have to uh, organize equipment for every new hire, for every employee that's working from home. Um, we as workforce management have a role in that. Um, planning, forecasting, how, how many equipment do we need? How many uh, people will, will work from home, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, that's kind of, um, am I linked to, to workforce management? Uh, what I see is that workforce management is now forecasting equipment requirements and delivering times. I think COVID also created problems with, uh, with manufacturing of, of laptops and, and equipment, et cetera, et cetera. So delivery times, are far more longer than before. So now we have have need, a higher need of equipment, we have to distribute it, and the delivery times uh, went up. Um, that's a great uh, challenge for workforce management. And if you think about workforce management being 
the um, function within your organization. And we call it workforce management in, in kind of the call center BPO industry. But if you think about workforce management in other industries like manufacturing and, and, and etc., then you wouldn't call it workforce management, you would call it production control or maybe supply chain management. So now think back about the equipment. Um, it it's perfectly fits in the function of workforce management to, um, to play a role. Um, but uh, also uh, 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 space, uh, seats, um, how many seats do we have available? Um, how many are occupied and, and, and think about the social distancing. So um, is there a, a, are there enough seats for the people that do work still in the office? Um, and I see also have for workforce management a role in um, the return to office. Um, we, we have seen now several peaks with, with COVID, uh, uh, but every time that we are going downhill, luckily again, then the discussion starts about, okay, ca can we bring some people back to the office when it's, when it's safe, when it's, how are we going to do it, when, uh, how many people can we bring back to the office? All discussions where workforce management play a role. Absolutely. In fact, uh, you know, um, COVID-19 has changed the landscape of WFF, right? We, we were looking at and, and now and also like uh, I see that 2022 is going to be a totally new game changing and we play a very key role and, uh, and that's absolutely right. And, and uh, we have challenges at the same time, you know, advantages and disadvantages. Absolutely. Yes. And coming to the uh, uh, really, uh, have talent sharing partnership emerged as a major HR and WFM strategy these days? Well, I'm going to take a bold state here. In my opinion, not. At least not enough. There's a kind of, of uh, a secondary effect of COVID-19. And that, that was probably before COVID-19 already but uh, uh, like the work from home, it accelerated. And that's the kind of shortage of, of workers. Um, I think many of our companies uh, struggle with finding resources. And that's kind of worldwide. Uh, the, the work from home has partly um, giving an opportunity to find uh, the new labor markets, uh, the, what I just uh, mentioned, uh, not close to a site anymore. But at the same time, COVID created new jobs uh, um, and a lot of our potential workforce is now working in COVID related jobs. So the shortage of labor um is is persisting um and then maybe even accelerated and um i think the entire industry ha will have to deal with this uh, as will some other industries that have the same uh, same challenges Absolutely. and innovation in the field of labor and labor flexibility flexibility um, will be necessary to meet the demand but also to make it attractive for that new home worker to opt for call center work. And um, I am promoting for some time already um, um, a kind of marketplace. Um, I think if you look at how we organize work today, it's maybe a little bit traditional even already. Um, how we create flex flexibility um, with the function of workforce management might be even a little bit traditional already. Um, there are tools in the market that will help you to uh, automate your intraday management. Um, I think that uh, would be a very good first step. But I envision long term much more uh, something like uh, a platform to 
a kind of a marketplace for, for supply and demand. And, and that means that an end customer, someone that, ha that wants to make a call, goes to a platform and finds uh, someone uh, uh, on the other end that wants to answer a call. Um, you, you can think about um, uh, the taxi uh, um, platforms like Uber, Lyft, um, but also uh, uh, many um, uh, delivery, food delivery companies are working with, with platforms like that. Um, I see an opportunity for contact center work um, because basically uh, what we what we try to do as work uh, from a workforce management point of view is balance that marketplace between supply and demand. Someone that wants to make a call and someone that answers your call. And I think, yeah, we have to invest as um, an industry as a function workforce management together in um, driving that innovation. Absolutely. And that is being very essential and driving the innovation is really essential. And uh, it is said that uh, uh, innovation is a journey, not a destination. Anything that we do today is going to be whole tomorrow. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely right. Uh, thank you for sharing the uh, other perspective, uh, Ronnie. Uh, other perspective. Do you think the benefits of reduced office work, workspace requirements, decreased commute time, and continued employees retention have uh, outweighed the negatives? Yeah, it's funny. I, I, I think many people would think that companies are saving money with reduced office space. I don't know if that's true. Um, one is that the office space that remains is not as efficient anymore, right? Uh, 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 think about the social distancing already mentioned uh, uh, before. Um, so maybe you need twice as uh, uh, many square feet um, for the same number of people that are still working in offices because not everyone is working at home, sometimes due to, uh, to very uh, uh, legitimate uh, uh, reasons. But um, so I do see that companies are uh, reducing their office space. Um, is that saving money? Again, I, I really don't know. Um, in, an, in an office you have, um, for example, let, let's take one example. You have one, internet a connection a big one a large one okay but it's basically one internet connection if you have your people working at home let's say you have an office with thousand uh, uh, seats and you have thousand people working in an office you have one big internet connection everyone is using that one internet connection now you have one thousand small internet connections to people's home but is that cheaper than that one internet connection? I don't think so. Um, so yeah, maybe there are is, is so, some benefits uh, uh, in reduced office space. But I think it's um, it, it you won't be you won't become rich in in this way for for sure not. Now think about the additional cost eh, for for work at home think about the the equipment that we talked about uh, the dedicated equipment not uh, not having hot seats hot equipment that are that is used by uh, uh, several employees in in in, uh, in multiple ships now everyone has equipment at home you have to ship their equipment to to people's home um, you have to make sure that you get the equipment back when people would resign. Um, so th there's there's additional costs, also additional challenges. Uh, uh, again, I think that that workforce management, uh, and that's my experience, has a great opportunity to um, to support or uh, your organization in how to organize, plan. Uh, uh, all those activities, but 
yeah, I don't know if it saves money. The decreased commute time is also very interesting that you mentioned for workforce management, because is that commute time now, is the, is the employee now available for work um, for the time that he normally would commute to work? Now, some people might only commute 50 minutes, um, but I know, um, especially in, in, uh, in larger cities uh, uh, around the world, that people easily have commute times of one hour, even two hours, and I have even heard of three hours. Um, now, that's time that the employee is, is kind of saving, and it's, of course, up to the employee how they, they would like to use that. But it's, of course, very interesting for workforce management to see if that uh, is now available time for work. And it creates also other opportunities, like is the employee now willing to work uh, split shifts because they don't have to go uh, back and forth and back and forth to the office anymore? Um, are they willing to work shorter shifts? Um, again, partly because they are at home anyway, so it, it really doesn't matter to, um, to work at least three hours. Um, maybe it's fine to work uh, one hour, have some time off and, and, and do uh, a few hours later uh, the day. So, um, yes, I, I, I do think um, there are benefits, but let's, let's be realistic that there are downsides as well. Um, um, so, um, but I like my, 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 my personality would like to look at the, uh, at, at the positives and, and really try to focus on how can we, uh, um, uh, in an, in a, a good way, use those, uh, those pos positive outcomes. Absolutely. In fact, uh, uh, now uh, worldwide, multiple regions have got multiple challenges now. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, we had a Middle East roundtable now uh, recently in the last month. All of them are talking about, you know, 100% working from home. And uh, here in Asia, uh, where uh, 50%, so you now they're working towards the hybrid model, where employees come in Monday, Wednesday, and then, you know, Friday and remaining days they work from home so that they also see kind of you know like cultural balance where they want to see the office they've been at home right so they want to catch up with the colleagues and also they want to feel the office culture and organization culture in fact the uh, HRs have been driving uh, employees to come back and, and uh, also uh, there's a lot of challenges in getting the people who work from office at the same time uh, uh, another way around. However, you know, the total shift in uh, work from home and then hybrid model and uh, at to watch and see that what's going to happen in 2022 and then uh, future, considering the fact that you know, are we going to come back to the normal working from uh, office it is something that uh, uh, is really a question mark for all of us. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I, I wouldn't have a clue, to be honest. Uh, um, on the one end, I see that working from home is, is, working, is working pretty good um, performance, etc. Performance wise, etc. I don't think we, we, we have struggles um, again. Um, you need to update your processes uh, and adjust your process. But if you have done that, then I, I, I think work from home is working pretty good. On the other hand, I, I do see the benefits of working in the office as well. And you're totally right. Um, uh, hybrid models are, are relatively common as well in multiple countries, um, which gives new challenges again. <laughs> How are you planning uh, who is in the office uh, with limited seats, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I think our workforce management systems are not really supporting this yet. There are workarounds, there are options how to uh, to, to do this, but it's not. They are not designed for anything like a, a hybrid model where you have people working in the office, limited seats, and working uh, people working uh, at at home. Um, 
who do you want to have in the office? How often are there kind of business rules behind that? Uh, or is it really equality? Uh, everyone works uh, uh, two days in the office or there are some other reasons that uh, new hires will work more in the office, um, etc. Very interesting stuff. Absolutely. And that, that has been a great learning for WFM folks. And, and also, you know, we've witnessed a lot of um, things that, you know, we have planned and executed. Yeah, yeah and if, if I may, not only a learning, it's I think we did an amazing job as well. Not, not only workforce management, but also workforce management. And you don't hear that quite uh, that often. At least I don't hear it that often. But how quick we, we adjust it um, also as workforce management. Um, I remember that that by my team I had centers of, of working uh, uh, workforce management, um, and I really had the the strategy that it was important that I had my workforce management in those centers um, okay. for learning, for continu continuity, uh, for management, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All the same, probably the same reasons that your supervisors, your operational managers would have in your contact centers. Um, and then all of a sudden, everyone was working from home and it went perfectly well. Um, there was not, not, not a, a huge issue. Uh, there were no, uh, no performance issues, et cetera, et cetera. So we adjusted as workforce management in two ways. One, um, we are working from home now also. And, and the second one is, we had to adjust to all those new processes and new uh, environment, basically, uh, making sure that we are supporting our organization with the right forecast, with the right planning, with the right schedules, um, etc. So we did an amazing job. That's great to know, and uh, and, and uh, this has been a great experience in, in uh, this year, and uh, even you know, like uh, I would say that overall, uh, COVID nineteen has really taught us. A lot of lessons. Yeah, and, um, yeah, and 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 to, to to a little bit answer your question about two, 2022 a little bit more. I, I strongly believe in um, in automation, and I know that uh, that a lot of workforce management people uh, love their job um, and and would like to do their their, their job for for the next 10, 20, 20 uh, plus years. Um, but I, I, I do think there's an opportunity for automation. Um, a lot of our work is still manual um, and our added value is not in the manual part of the work that we do. It's much more on the high end um, where we have a lot of, a lot of added value in um, high knowledge uh, um, uh, tasks. Um, not in the kind of low no knowledge tasks that we are doing today manually. And if we can make the transition to, um, <clears throat> to that high value task by automating the low value uh, manual task, um, I think that's where we, our focus should be in, uh, in 2022. Absolutely. And, and that's a good preparedness that you know, we can really look at uh, for 2022. Yeah, that's great. Absolutely. Well, uh, thank you so much. You know, uh, last thing I want to uh, hear from you, and I'm sure that the uh, rest of the WFM folks uh, worldwide would want to know, uh, you know, <clears throat> kind of message that you have for them. Maybe, you know, they should uh, do something differently. Uh, to, one is to upskill, uh, you know, maybe uh, they should do something differently. Uh, the kind of lessons that they learned uh, during the COVID-19, the preparedness to support the business and how they can really get the right strategy in place and maybe contributing more to the organization or to the class customers. Yeah, yeah, well, there are, there are several things and I will try to, uh, to, uh, to link it to our conversation today. Um, one is that uh, that workforce management as, as a function is very similar to the function of production control uh, um, and and uh, uh, supply chain management in other industries. If you think about uh, workforce management like that, 
then uh, you have an open mind of supporting your organization um, not only with uh, schedules for 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 employees um, and we talked about that in this uh, in in the last uh, uh, few minutes right so I, I think having that open mind is one two is is that we Workforce management, most of us learned workforce management by doing. Um, there's no university for workforce management. You don't go to uh, 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 any university with the idea, oh, I'm going to be um, um, a planner or a, a scheduler in the future. But workforce management is heavily a knowledge and skill based function. Um, so we have to invest in training and building knowledge and education. Um, and that's tied to the automation. Um, and that also needs that, again, that open mind. I think we should look at how to not only make our organization efficient, um, but also how we can make workforce management itself more efficient and more effective. That means education, high level value, automation of, of uh, uh, low level tasks. Um, that requires some, um, how do you say that, some, some, some courage um, that you are willing to invest in automating what you might be are doing today but have that open mind that you can add much more value in um, in the consultancy and the uh, uh, driving direction part of your, uh, for your organization. Um, that's what I would be my advice for uh, for workforce management uh, staff around the world. Thanks, Rene. Uh, it's been very uh, well covered. In fact, uh, uh, I'm sure that. Uh, the WF professionals at the rest of the world would definitely benefit a lot from your conversation with GWFM. It has been immense learning and great insights that you have shared, you know, from the passion side of it and also you know your experience side of it. And, and uh, great thoughts that you have shared to the rest of the WFM folks that what is that they should do to contribute differently. It's been an immense learning for me as well and uh, great conversation with uh, GWF fan and uh, it uses a great uh, uh, pleasure having you with us and on behalf of GWFM I express sincere gratitude for your valuable presence and your time running. Thank you so much and, and above all take care of all. Thank you. Thank you so much.